Here is the LIDA model LCT193D cassette checker. Now, there has been a part one to this video, which I will link to in the video description. However, it's such a painfully slow and long video that I'll just briefly recap what happened so far. So, I got this unit off eBay. It came with the wrong type of power supply, and when I inspected the inside of the unit, it looked like there had been modifications, so I could no longer be sure that uh, the unit had not been modified to accept that wrong power supply. And we're talking wrong polarity and wrong voltage. So the first thing I had to do was trace out the circuit. I found the pin out of various components and that way I was able to confirm the polarity and the voltage. See, we do have a battery meter setting uh, on this device, so that way I was able to figure out the voltage. Now, the D in the model number stands for the fact that this device was designed to work with the European standard of checking speed and wow and flutter, which is based on a test tone frequency of 3150 hertz as opposed to the 3000 hertz, 3 kilohertz, used elsewhere around the world. The previous owner of this device, however, only had a 3 kilohertz test tone cassette, so he changed an internal adjustment to make the speed test work with that 3 kilohertz test tone cassette. The consequence of that was that the zero adjustment no longer worked. It just pegged the meter. But I was able to correct that. However, in the process, I had a little accident. Rather than turning the trimmer adjustment V6, I accidentally turned the adjustment V9. And that's where the last video ended, with me asking for help, asking for a service manual so that I could correct my mistake. Now, a big thanks goes out to the people who have since provided help. I now have a service manual. The first thing that I was able to determine, thanks to the service manual and the schematic within the service manual, is indeed the power supply circuit had been modified. Now, this unit does have a battery compartment in the back panel, which sits in this spot, but there is nothing in there. The battery compartment connects right here, but that was where the external DC input jack was connected to when I got the unit. Now, you can see, I was able to determine by looking at the schematic, the DC input jack is supposed to be connected over here. And that explains why initially this uh, was behaving so strangely. See, this unit is supposed to take 6 volts DC center negative on the DC input jack, but with the jack falsely connected to over here, you had to set the voltage to around 16 volts. And with the voltage set to 16 volts, the measurements were still very much dependent on the input voltage. Now, the way this works is you have DC 6 volts coming in through this jack. There is a DC to DC converter right here, which converts to 14 volts. The 14 volts are then going through this negative 12 volts regulator, and then there is a clever op-amp-based circuitry to create a virtual ground, and then in the end, this unit runs off a symmetric positive and negative 6 volts. That's quite a complex way of doing it, and I would not have been able to figure that out 
without the help of the service manual. But that has all been corrected now. So I moved on and used the service manual to its full potential. I went through and completely recalibrated this cassette checker. So we do have a variety of functions. The first one is this rather hopeless DC volts measurement. You can measure up to 15 volts at a very low accuracy because, as you can see, there aren't very many subdivisions for the voltage range. So that's a bit strange. Next in line is a noise and a level measurement. And what I was able to determine through the calibration process is that level and noise are essentially the same thing. The only difference is the sensitivity, which does make sense. Noise is a lot more sensitive than level. Now, then there is the aforementioned speed measurement, as well as the zero adjust for that. And we also have this frequency generator. And you will notice you get all kinds of different frequencies on here to choose from. But, of course, Lida does not want you to create your own test tone cassettes. So there is no 3150 hertz option in here. But I was able to recalibrate all that. The previous owner had not messed with any other settings, so everything was pretty close already. And last but not least, there is the wow and flutter measurement. This was the measurement that needed recalibration the most because the V9 adjustment that I had accidentally turned it determines the full scale 0.3% point. And this measurement was the biggest challenge to recalibrate because the service manual asks for a device I did not even know existed, a wow and flutter generator. Of course, I don't have such a device, so I had to get creative. And the first idea I came up with was to generate a 3150 hertz tone in Audacity and try to manipulate that with the Wawa effect to hopefully get something resembling the test tone that I needed. I used the WFGUI software Wow and Flutter Meter to check what I was doing, but unfortunately I was not successful. It did not work. And then the second idea, the more simple one, I actually had while talking to a friend of mine. And I said, well, I have not actually checked yet if maybe somebody has uploaded one of those test tones to the Internet. And it was this friend who then found a web forum thread where somebody had posted a variety of of Wow and Flutter test tone signals, and among those were the ones that I needed. So I was finally also able to recalibrate the Wow and Flutter measurement and to correct the mistake that I had made earlier. So there it is, finally all repaired and working, the Leader Cassette Checker. I checked some date codes in here, and those suggest the unit was made in 1984. I'm now recording a new test tone cassette, and straight away, because when I recorded the last test tone cassette, a lot of people said, no, you can't do that. You can't just simply do that at home. You have to get a real test tone cassette. Well, this is an Akai GX75. This has a servo-locked direct drive. The flywheel is the motor. And for the standards of a cassette deck, the flywheel is massive.
So I do trust this cassette deck with running at the correct speed. And you also have to remember the real test tone cassettes had to be recorded somehow too. And a lot of those real test tone cassettes that I have seen over the years looked very much as if they had just simply been recorded in a mass duplication plant. They looked exactly like pre-recorded cassettes of the time. Talking about cassettes, the cassette I'm using here is a TDK SAX. It's a really good chrome position cassette from the 1980s. Reason I'm using it is because, well, somebody kind of ruined the inlay card. Now, how am I recording this? I generated a 3150Hz tone in Audacity and put that on a CD. So I don't have to worry about what any of my less than perfect frequency generators are doing. This is a perfect signal. And I'm recording from CD to cassette. I am monitoring the signal of the tape all the time. This time, as you can see, I have set the levels to the zero decibel VU point and not the zero point on this meter. So what does the cassette checker think about all this? Well, of course, since we are recording and playing in the same cassette deck, the speed is bang on. The wow and flutter, let's wait a little bit for that to stabilize. I would say the wow and flutter is uh, hovering around 0 0.06 and 0.08%. Now, you have to keep in mind the cassette deck mechanism and the cassette, they all form a complex mechanical system, and that is what generates a certain wow and flutter pattern. Now, what we're doing here is we're recording. So, the record head sees this wow and flutter pattern and records it onto the tape. The playback head, this is a three-head cassette deck, but the playback head is offset from the record head by about a centimeter. So at the time of playback, the wow and flutter pattern is no longer the same as it was at the time of recording. So, the wow and flutter is doubled. So, what we have to do to get the real wow and flutter that is being recorded onto the cassette right now is we have to divide by two. So, as I said earlier, we're hovering between 0 0.06 and 0 0.08. So, divided by two, that's 0 0.03 and 0 0.04. And that is just perfect because this cassette deck was rated by Akai to do 0.04% wow and flutter measured according to DIN. That is 0.025% WRMS in case you wonder. And this is the big advantage that we have from recording our own test tone cassette because the real test tone cassettes, most of them don't come with any sort of rating telling you how much wow and flutter has already been recorded onto the cassette. With this one, I can always know that I have to deduct 0.04% from any reading that I get from this cassette checker using this test tone cassette. And finally, let's test a cassette deck I recently repaired. Here is the Yamaha KX200 playing the new test tone cassette. The playback levels are all over the place, really, but that may very well be due to the very low resolution meter. 
What does the cassette checker say? Well, let's first confirm that our zero adjustment is correct for the speed. And it is. So let's switch to speed test. And that's very close, maybe a little bit low. However, earlier on it was a little bit high, so I think we're pretty close. Let's switch to Wow and Flutter. Wait for the meter to stabilize. Okay, and I would say, yeah, that's that's hovering around 0.12. Percent. Now we know we have 0.04% already recorded onto the cassette, so we have to deduct that and we end up with 0.08%. What does Yamaha rate this cassette deck for? 0.15% DIN. So we're well below that. Thank you for watching.